the internet these days, it has become quite convenient for people to understand what is personal finance. And that is really what even I was thinking at one point of time. I was assuming that with the so much of education and educational initiatives going all around, I believed and assumed that most of my friends, most of my colleagues probably knew about personal finance. And it was only when I actually went out for a dinner with some of my closest friends that I realized that I was completely wrong. So it all started when I went for a dinner with two of my closest friends, Archie and Priyanka. And uh, just like we had these random conversations across with our friends, when we asked all the crazy stuff, for a brief moment of time, I thought, why not go ask something serious out there? And I asked Priyanka, hey Priyanka, how is your personal finance management going on? To which she instantly responded that my personal finance is going fantastic. I'm actually investing into a lot of mutual funds. I'm actually investing into a TLSS fund. And everything is sorted because I'm going to save a lot of the taxes. After a brief pause, I thought that okay, she might add up to something else. But what I realized is that was it. For real, the personal finance meant investing into mutual funds. After a brief pause, I asked the same question by tilting my head towards Archie. Hey Archie, how is your personal finance going on? To which she responded, it's completely mess. Archie narrated a story where she told that she's already sitting on three loans. One is a housing loan, one is a vehicle loan, another one is a personal loan. On the top of that, Archie being a women friend, and we all know that women love shopping. So she used to do a lot of shopping almost every month through various e-commerce websites. And she told me that she was always running out of her credit card limit. And you'll be astounded to know that she was earning 2 lakh rupees a month. And my dear friends, in a place and an emerging nation like India, if you're earning 2 lakh rupees per month, that's not a small salary, that's a decent sized salary. And that is when I realized that, oh my god, despite earning so much in a country, despite being so educated, people are still committing so many mistakes when it comes to personal finance management. And that didn't let me sleep. Over the next day, I started calling all my friends to ask. Hey, what do you know about personal finance? I stopped to a few strangers while I was there for a walk, strolling around in the garden. And my dear friends, I realized that irrespective of so much of information, which is available over the internet about personal finance, in the 21st century, unfortunately, in an emerging nation like India, a lot of people are not aware about the basic principles. And that's what gave me a thought process to think that, okay, in my next edX talk, I'm actually going to deliver about the shortest class ever of personal finance in the 21st century. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Avishik Kar. Uh, I'm a trader, investor, educator with close to, in fact, more than a million following across the social media platforms. Yes, I started my journey as a trader, but eventually I realized that in our country, there are a lot of taboos around finance. There are a lot of concerns because of which I started my YouTube channel, which with God's grace is running with 6 lakh 50 thousand followers. And there are some other platforms on which I'm working. And I thought, why not make this opportunity to talk about the various principles which can actually help you out to set your personal finance correct in the 21st century. So without wasting any more time, let's jump onto those principles which specifically you need to focus in our country in 21st century. The first thing, credit cards. I asked Nelda, how many credit cards do you own? To which she responded, I have three credit cards. And I was like, what? Why do you have three credit cards? To which she responded, see one I use for my shopping, the second one I use to get a reward points when which I do additional shopping and the third one I'm actually using because I get free access to various airport lounges. And I realized the very concept of credit cards has been flawed to the, together over here. I asked Priyanka, do you keep a tab about when to pay the EOIs, when to pay the address and she is like, oh sometimes I don't miss out but that's a mutual interest rate. And I realized in 21st century, if you are a modern day person in an emerging nation like India, you cannot escape out of this credit card scheme. So am I saying that you should completely avoid credit cards? No. What I'm trying to say is that just for getting a lot of reward points, a lot of people are getting into credit cards. That's not the right approach. It is often being said that credit cards are required by those people 
who don't need it at all. Just think about it for a while. Those people who definitely don't need a credit card should be the ones who should use this credit card. So as a thumb rule, in the 21st century, never exhaust the entire limit of your credit card, no matter what happens out there. And you remember when I was talking to Priyanka, Priyanka also told her that since she was investing in mutual funds or ELSS or different types of funds, this is what she understood as personal finance. My dear friends, personal finance is not just about investing. Investing is just a part of our personal finance. Personal finance is much more than that. So what are the three principles you've got to keep in mind in the 21st century if you're staying in India? If you want to consider investing as an option, first, you have to create a budget based on the salary or the income which you're getting every month. The second thing, the moment you are actually completing your education, you have to make sure you are taking care of your education and neck. A lot of students actually take a lot of student loans and they think that, okay, I'll keep on paying the student loan entire life. That's not the right approach. You have to be first, Device a mechanism through which you can get rid of that. And the third one, you have to have a contingency plan or emergency fund. And don't make it very complicated. Personal finance isn't that complicated. Just keep 20% of your monthly income as an emergency fund account. That has to be maintained separately. Now, after addressing this insurance part, there's another thing which in our country has lately taken over. And that is called as lifestyle creep. What does this mean? Simply what happens is, in our country, it is often said that we are not a well-driven society. We are a status-driven society. We are always hunting for status. And how does that start? That starts from our neighbors. The moment your neighbor actually buys an SUV car, you're the first one. You're talking about, oh, now I need to get a better car than that. The moment you understand that one of your friends have actually go to, gone to maybe Malaysia for a trip with his family, you'll start planning out even though you were not desiring at any point of time to go to Malaysia. And you don't even realize in this rat race, you certainly start paying a lot of money, eventually just through credit cards or loans, and that is where you get into a credit trap. So the very first thing you want to understand is, if you want to have peaceful and personal finance in our country, you need to stop comparing your finances with others. Your intentions could be different, your motives could be different, and what gives happiness to your neighbor may not give exact happiness to you. So that's one more integral part in the 21st century, which if you are considering personal finance, you have to keep in the wire. And lifestyle feed is not understood that easy. It's not just about the spending habits out there. A lot of style, we do impulse buy. What is impulse buy? We suddenly start buying a lot of things. And it's only during a lot of festive occasions that after a big boom, we start swiping our houses and they realize, oh, I also had that headphone which I wore only once. Oh, I had that dress which I have worn only twice. That is what you need to control. And how you can control that? By simply distinguishing between needs and wants. So the very next step, what you have to do is maintain a diary. Keep a line in between right needs and wants. Very simply asking, only the platforms. Is it a need or a want? The answer is, it is a want. Need is anything which is necessity, which is required for survival. Paying the rent is a need. Paying your house's EMI is a need. Paying for your child's education is a need. Or any platform, maybe it is not the need, it is a want. It is the urge which you want to get. Uh, uh, going for a party in Goa, what is that? It is simply an urge. That is not a need. So now you will say, Avishikari is saying that we should completely cut off our words and only focus on needs. No, not at all. But once you start writing it all, you can actually make the budget based on your expenses, salary, and the profile. The problem is we have forgotten our ancient culture of writing things down. We think, we overestimate the human brains. We feel that we can remember almost everything, which my dear friends is completely wrong. You can't remember everything. So make sure you start writing it down. There are multiple apps also in the 21st century, which can help you out to understand another thing. Coming back to another aspect of personal finance, that is his debt. And we have often heard that you should not have liabilities, you should only have assets. And thanks to a lot of new age gurus, as well as a lot of uh, books which have been popularizing this concept that you should not have any debt, you should only have assets without even understanding that it is situational. You ought to understand that there are a few industries which thrive on debt. When you are actually talking about capital intensive businesses, it could be railways, it could be automobiles, it could be anything. You can't just pick out some money from your pocket and start a car company out there. For operational activities also, you need some sort of debt. 
So what does this mean? In 21st century, you cannot cut off the debt, but you can definitely manage the debt. That is something which you have to understand. And for that, again, my dear friends, what you need is planning. You have to plan what are the needs. You have to plan, okay, what is the timeline within which you are going to complete? You have to always overestimate. You always try to overestimate your deliveries. You have to underestimate because you don't know. For those people who are into businesses, they hardly knew when a pandemic was going to hit and that is going to crush their revenues. So you have to always stand further that anything can actually happen out there into that industry. So that is basically it. Tech management is another integral part and that also falls into the credit card facility. Another thing, real estate. In our country, we have definite fascination when it comes to real estate. You just go and talk to your great grandparents and they would always talk that the first investment to do ever in our country is real estate. And without even questioning them, we blindly feel that okay, in our era also, we should only invest into real estate. But did you know why they were so much fascinated with the real estates? The reason is because of two primary reasons. First, the lack of other options. 30, 40 years back, there were no PMS funds, there were no mutual funds, there were no hedge funds. There were hardly any mutual funds, nothing was there. The only option which was left was gold as well as properties. And the second thing is the trust factor which we Indians always keep at par. In India, trust is very important. And anything which we cannot touch and feel definitely falls below the rankings of the trust scoreboard. So land is something, gold is something which they could touch and feel and that's why they felt comfortable. But in 21st century, there are multiple avenues. Also, you've got to understand there are multiple chaotic things also which happen. For example, you must have seen, and most of your families also, there might be some cases where they must have fought into some property. But unfortunately, that is debatable. Maybe there is a perfect stay out there. And then you realize that my entire ilga got hooked up into that reality stuff. So personal finance also means you need to start diversifying. You need to diversify your mutual funds, debt funds. Even if it is going to crypto, some amount into the cryptos, inquities, businesses, your own skill development. That is basically what is going to form the core of personal finance in 21st century. Which brings me to another point. Multiple income sources. Sadly, and hopefully I would say that in our country, although everyone wants to make a lot of money, but the moment we see someone who is making multiple times your own salary, the envy has almost creates it. Everyone starts getting jealousy that, oh, how will this person make two X than mine? Without even realizing that that person is putting in that much of efforts. But then, you also need to find multiple income sources. And you know why? Because you got to understand that things these days have actually changed. You got to understand that pandemic gave you a reality check. A lot of people were working into multinational companies. And they actually found this as a very big problematic situation where they were trying to uh, find multiple jobs to pay their EMIs, but they failed to find multiple jobs. And that is where they had to come up with their end. So my dear friends, in 21st century, you can survive with credit cards. You can survive with debt, probably if you know debt management. You have to have multiple digital sources if you're staying into a country. You cannot just depend on a single revenue sources. You need to understand the difference between needs and wants and not just assets and liabilities. And at the end, the most important thing with which I would like to leave you on is that you need to make it a central stage of debate over your dinner tables. In India, it is considered as a taboo when you talk about finances on your table. The very moment the kid actually is going to talk about the business with his father over a dinner table, the father would be, come on, just focus on your studies. The very moment someone is actually going to talk about loans and its repercussion, or they will talk it later first, grow up, and then we'll see. That's completely wrong. Because what we need is step by step education. And education, my dear friends, on personal finance will start from your own houses. Thank you so much.